right, more political posts are popping up on Facebook, and rightly so with the election now just weeks away. So if you're getting tired of perhaps seeing all those posts and you want to filter them out just for a little while, we're here to help. Jennifer has been uh, joining us right now from the newsroom with social media expert Mike Johansson with some tips. Hello, Jen. Hi there, yeah, and we're going over some of the things we're already beginning to see pop up. Mike was saying last hour that, you know, we were wondering what are some of the big phrases that have come out, and he was saying, you know, we begin to see a little bit overnight, but it's really not till a little bit later in, in the morning that we really see begin to see the real explosion of what was coming out. But we just saw, uh, Norma, you might like this one, the whole binder comment. Mm. There was the Patrick Swayze one, and what did it just say? Uh, no one puts a baby in a binder. <laughs> Right? Uh, all right, we want to mention again uh, how to maybe like your friends and you like their posts, you know, maybe 90% of the year, but maybe right now you don't want to hear, um, you know, all their conspiracy theories and all the, their opinions on uh, the uh, politics in general. He's going to show us how you can block someone in the short term. And my question is, as we do this, do they know you've done this? No, they don't. Okay. Yeah, they don't. So but it's, it's muting them in a friendly way. Sure, sure. You're not, <laughs> selling, you're not telling them to get lost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you show us how. All right, so the right-hand side of the post up here, you see the little arrow. Uh-huh. Uh, you go hide. It says they're now hidden. Then you get this little thing, change updates. So uh, what updates? Uh, yes, all updates. So now we're hiding all updates from that person. So she won't come up at all? She won't come up in your feed now. And then the thing to remember is that I've, I've got a few people I've done this to. Um, none of them in Rochester, I should say, so that's OK. <laughs> um, but I just have to remember that after the election is over, I have to go back in and add them back in. And let's do that, because sure. we want to you know, not leave anyone hanging here. Yeah. Um, and sure. again, for, for someone who is as technically savvy, or shall I say unsavvy as I am, I need this other part of it, because otherwise they would never come back from the brink of being muted, if you would. So we're going to unblock your friend, and you type in their name. So this is, a, this is a business site. So I go up under where it says liked, and there's a little toggle here that says show in news feed. Uh -huh. So it's another way to do it. You can like, oh, you can it. toggle it on, or you can toggle it off. That's another way to do it. But it's actually, for most people, it's easier to do it in the news feed, because that's where you get annoyed. Right. You're annoyed in the moment. You can take care of it right there. <laughs> Uh, and let's let's talk about Twitter, because um, I'll be honest, uh, not my forte. Um, and sometimes, I, sometimes I don't want to follow someone just because you so get overwhelmed. But there's a way to categorize and, and maybe make it a little bit more manageable. Sure, sure. And so you know, the, the big challenge with Twitter is everyone thinks it's like the fire hose. If you're following 500 people, you're getting updates from 500 people, but you don't have to tolerate that, as it were. <laughs> you organize people by list. So, for example, I have a Rochester list. I have an RIT list because that's where I teach. I have a social media list, public relations list, and I can in Twitter go in and just have that list display, which means that if there are a lot of people doing a lot of political stuff, just don't put them on a list. Ah, gotcha. That's something you would do on a desktop. You can't necessarily do it on, on a mobile phone necessarily? Well, you can. It's very, it's kind of clunky on mobile because okay. it's such a small screen, uh, but there are applications you can download to your computer. One is called Hootsuite, H-O-O-T-S-U-I-T-E, -O -O -E. another one's called TweetDeck, D-E-C-K. <laughs> And we discuss why I have to spell that out. Yeah. Tweet deck. With his accent, deck, tweet deck. Yes. <laughs> and, and those uh, things allow you to organize the streams coming in. They also allow you to organize the way you send things out, but that's for another day. So. We still have that up. Maybe see what it looks oh, like. And there's a, and another thing that I mentioned was this thing called tweet grid. Uh -huh. And this is a way just to follow, this is how I followed the debate last night. So I ended up here, hashtag debate 2012, hashtag debates and hashtag decision 2012. Okay. So anyone who sent a tweet with that hashtag phrase in it shows up here in real time. So how do you do that? Do you go to like tweetgrid.com or is that something you need to download? No, no, this is, this is just a web base. This is good. This is uh, just tweetgrid.com. Dot com. Okay, and so then th that's when you then put in the hashtags, which is yeah. again explaining what ha these hashtag thing is all about. <laughs> so I can change this one, for example, to... What about binder? Well, sure, it's a good idea, why not? <laughs> Hashtag binder. Well, or just word binder. Uh, if I can spell <laughs> binder. And I hope we just, fingers crossed, everything's... Binder's full of women. What have, binder's full of single ladies. Nobody puts baby in a binder. Hilarious. <laughs> uh, yeah, so lots of discussion around binder. 
Okay, so definitely a manageable way because yeah, you're right. It's like a fire hose. You know, you have so many people and then how do you manage it all coming in? It's just hard to wrap your mind around. So probably better on a desktop because on a mobile phone, I guess that would get really small and we need to save our eyes eyesight. <laughs> yeah, and you can do it, as I say. You've just really got to be willing to be patient and take the time and flip between lists and screens and yeah. And this is one instance where those hashtags really can become um, really user friendly. Sure, absolutely. And you know, um, for example, last night a bunch of journalism students at RIT were live tweeting the political debate and so they had uh, uh, RIT uh, debate, or no, vote RIT was the hashtag, hashtag vote RIT. Uh -huh. So you could see what these journalism students were saying about what each side had said, how the questioning was going, how people were reacting. So that was one way to follow the debate. Now I get it. I've been waiting for someone to take my hand and say, Jennifer, this is how it works. You've done it. Thank you very much. Oh, you're very Norma. It makes sense now. Finally. See? Finally, I can join this whole hashtag thing. I you finally know, get it. Mike, hashtags are great because they organize, like you said, they organize the conversation. So you can look up, you know, a lot of information in a little bit of time. But again, you're not blocking. And the thing about the blocking on, on Facebook, it's only temporary. It's only temporary. Only temporary. All right. A partial breakup. Hashtag back to you. Okay. Thank you, Jen. We appreciate it. And thanks so yeah. much to Mike Johansson. Uh-huh. She great says hashtag guy. thank you. Oh. <laughs>